Hello and welcome to my lecture series on statistics. Today I'm going to show you what a linear statistical model is. Now, as you may remember from the last lecture, any straight line relationship between the response variable and the explanatory variable can be written down as follows y equals a plus bx, where a is the intercept and b is the slope. So that's nothing new for us now, just remembering it from the last lectures. There's some scatter. You've put a line through it. a is the intercept and b is the slope of this line. Now you see the scatter here, and I introduced that also in one of the last lectures. The scatter around the line is usually what we call the so-called residuals. Now, the linear statistical model is basically just a change in notation of this straight line relationship here. So we write the following. The expected value of y is beta naught plus beta 1x. So nothing has changed, actually. The expected value of y given that we do a very large number of samples is beta naught plus beta 1x. Now in real-world situations we will usually not encounter the situation shown here. There will be residuals present and we write the model therefore as follows y equals beta naught plus beta 1 x plus the residuals or, so this is the case for one explanatory variable, for more than one explanatory variables we will write the equation like this beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus dot 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 plus errors. So you can see that this equation basically generalizes to something that we can summarize like that. In matrix notation we would just write y equals, and now comes something a bit unfamiliar, it's capital X beta plus the errors. Now this thing here is a matrix of explanatory variables and beta is a vector of coefficients. This is the very general form of a linear statistical model. Now let's look at that in a bit greater detail. Let's just assume we've collected some data. Let's assume the y variable consists of measurements here. Let's say we have measurements of 5 and 10 and 12 and 13 and maybe 16 down here. Let's enter these values like that. We know that the sample size is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we've measured 5 times something in our response variable. Now this is supposed to be now beta naught plus beta 1 times the values of our explanatory variable. Now let's just assume that this is a variable that takes on fairly small values like 1, 2, 4, 6 and 7 and then maybe another one here beta 2 times some other values here, for example O, but maybe minus 1, minus 4, minus 3 and minus 6, plus the residuals. So what do we have here? This thing here is the response variable. This one here is the first explanatory variable in the model. And this thing here is the second explanatory variable. Now we can write this equivalently as y 
equals beta naught beta 1 times the matrix of explanatory variables which is 1, 2, 4, 6 and 7 and O minus 1, minus 4, minus 3, minus 6 plus the residuals and put it in more formal terms we have here y equals beta naught beta 1 x plus the residuals. So actually there's nothing too complicated about it. It's just we change notation a bit and we end up with a way to write down linear statistical models in a very convenient form and work on with them. In later lectures here we'll cover more advanced topics so stay connected to this channel and thank you for listening.